The internet is flush with AI tools and if there's one quality that most of these have, that is a text-based input method. Whether you talk about ChatGPT, Sora, DALI, Gemini or any of the tools that I mentioned in my previous video, all of them require a text input. So as these tools become more and more common, it's important that one learns how to effectively use them. Now on the surface, it might seem like a no-brainer. You type in a question, you get an answer and that's it. But how many times is the answer actually useful? That is where prompt engineering comes in. Prompt engineering is a way of explicitly putting your thoughts in words so that these language models can give you an answer that's actually relevant. I can almost guarantee you that you're not even using Google to its maximum potential and these AI tools are a whole different game. What's up guys, this is AK and in today's video, I'm going to be going over what prompt engineering is and some very basic ways, without getting too technical, in which you can start applying it every time you use ChatGPT or any other AI tools. So like I mentioned, these AI tools can't read your mind at least until Elon Musk launches his brain implant. So you need to know how to put down your thoughts in writing. And as we go along, I'll give you guys some templates you can use. By reducing how much the model has to guess, you can get an answer that caters better to your queries. So in order to get a more relevant answer, it's important that you provide it with the context and any important details that might be useful. For example, instead of saying who's the president, you should be asking who was the president of the United States in 2021 and how often are the elections held. This way the language model doesn't have to guess the country or the year you're asking about. Another example I can give you is in programming. So instead of saying write a code to calculate the Fibonacci sequence, say write a TypeScript function to efficiently calculate the Fibonacci sequence. Comment the code liberally to explain what each piece does and why it's written that way. This way, you're explicitly telling it to comment the code so you can better understand how a certain concept works. That's the whole point of these LLMs, is to make information easier to digest. Another really powerful way you can use this is by asking it to adopt a persona. So instead of saying, create a timetable to teach a class trigonometric differentiation, say, imagine you are a teacher, create a 5-day lesson plan to teach a grade 10 class the concept of trigonometric differentiation. Include revision tests in your lesson plan as well you'll see a big difference in outputs. I think at this point, you kind of get the idea that I'm trying to put across. Better prompts means better answers. It's easy for language models to lie with confidence. You may have heard about ChatGPT hallucinating before. You tell it to do one thing, it does another. One of the cases where this happens commonly is when you're trying to talk to it about a particular topic and it starts pulling contradicting answers from all over the internet or answers that you know for a fact are wrong, like the earth is flat, oh wait no, I can't, I'll get cancelled. Hence, providing a reference text is useful. Just like how if a student is provided with a cheat sheet, he'll do better in a test. Here's a template you can use. So this is the raw template you can get from the description. And now I've inserted two articles here on city living. Unfortunately, ChatGPT can't access links like humans can, so you'll have to copy it and paste it manually. But I think that bit of effort is worth it considering that the result is a personalized answer that's relevant to you. So I'm going to hit enter. You can see it has explained both sides of the argument and then given me a reason why one argument is stronger. With this, you can consume articles at blazing speeds. Now, there's a flip side to whatever I just talked about. Say you're summarizing a long document such as a book. Language models have a fixed context length which means they cannot be used to summarize text that is longer than the context length minus the length of the generated summary in a single query. I know it's very complex, let me break it down. What is context length? The language model has a limitation. So say you're typing out a prompt and the context length is 500. It can only process the last 500 words of the given prompt. Now let's move on to the context length minus the generated summary part. Think of it like RAM, random access memory. Every time a language model is processing a prompt, it's storing it in a random access memory of its own. Once this memory is filled up, it can't process anything beyond that. RAM in computers is very similar to working memory in humans, which is why it's hard to process longer text and it's important to break it down into simpler tasks. So let's say you want to summarize a long document like a book. There is still a way. That is to summarize small sections of the book recursively. If it's necessary to use earlier information, you can provide it a summary of the earlier part so you can take that into consideration when summarizing this new part. So you can ask it to summarize chapter 1 and then 2 and then 3 and so on and then combine them all into one summary. Just like how in software engineering, it's easier to break down a large model into smaller, simpler tasks. It's the same for language models. Breaking down a complex task will make it easier to comprehend and reduce error rate. So those are some very basic ways in which you can use prompt engineering in your everyday work. 
If you'd like a part 2 of this video, let me know in the comments below. Drop a like on this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for more such videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.